This device is doing something pretty extraordinary. Using a coil of copper wire, um, some hunks of metal, permanent magnet, and some gears, it's able to take power out of the wall and turn it into a consistent clock reference or something used for synchronization. There's a much lower cost alternative to what I just showed you um, that we'll see in a lot of regular electronics. And it's this 32.768 kilohertz crystal. And its job is to resonate at that specified frequency and create pulses on and off that it can use to synchronize something called a real-time clock. And that number, that 32,768, that's a convenient number because it's 2 to the power of 15 pulses, which is a nice binary number that we can store in a microcontroller. I want to show you something. I, uh, I hooked an oscilloscope up to the coil of this really basic synchronous motor. Um, and just a really quick tip, I removed the ground. I didn't use that ground because I'm not entirely sure on the wiring in here. And this is the earth ground of the socket. So if I accidentally connect this to some sort of actual power on the socket, um, that will create a short circuit and fry things. But anyways, I'm able to now see on the oscilloscope what signal is going across this little um, coil. What we're looking at here is essentially the 120 volt signal right out of the wall, or the power. And the power and its ability to make things move and all that stuff is all fabulous, but actually what I want to look at is the fact that the frequency of this wave is 60 hertz, right? It's not an uncommon piece of knowledge to know that. We can actually see that there's some variance in this measurement, right? It bounces around and that could be due to all sorts of things, but typically, right, we can expect this to be at 60 hertz. And this is something that is consistent, right? It's a nice rock that I could potentially base my timing off of. So, in fact, one of the devices that uses that as a timing mechanism is this uh, timer outlet, right? So I have the ability to go through and select which times I want my device to run and what time I don't want it to run, and this rotates one revolution every day. Back under the hood of our uh, little timer outlet, we're looking at our timing module, and we can see our basic AC motor, uh, and it actually only has a single pole pair, right? It's as simple as it can be, um, but that also means that it's rotating at 60 revolutions per second. And Right, we actually know our output, our very final output gear, needs to be going one revolution every day. And so you can see this transmission here. Um, each one of these gears is actually kind of going successively slower. And I calculated out this is around a 1 to 5,400,000 uh, reduction ratio here. So this has a really, really, really low torque right, coming out of this motor, and it's able to drive something a little bit bigger, but it's driving it really, really slowly, which is what we want. And, right, the real, real timekeeping thing is the way that this motor rotates, right? We're actually relying on it to go 60 revolutions every second for this to keep time accurately. The fact of the matter is that analog timekeeping devices like that are becoming a lot less common, right? They're being eclipsed by digital systems like this. And the example that I showed you actually made sense because it already had this mechanical interface that um, you were going to set your times in, and so it kind of makes sense to have a mechanical timekeeping mechanism as well. Um, and so if you look at some older systems like um, HVAC systems or even old analog clocks, you might find the same exact sort of timekeeping mechanism. In fact, in 1893, Nikola Tesla um, showed at the World's Fair that it was actually possible to use 60 hertz to synchronize clocks. And it turns out that the power providers are aware that this is a feature that some devices exploit, um, so much so that they're actually required to keep the frequency out such that it doesn't vary by more than a couple seconds every day. I find this um, timekeeping device to be 
one of those beautiful pieces of engineering that's kind of hidden in plain sight. Um, so I thought it was something worth sharing, and I'm curious if you've come across any analog timekeeping uh, devices that you find to be interesting.